You know, Mike, for a city to be a city, people should live in it. And, and what better way to get people to live in it than to have wonderful access to food and market and energy and all kinds of, you know, cool stuff going, going around with people interacting and, and socializing and all of that. And, and of course, I'd already been to Milwaukee three times and, and got, I got what they were doing and, and picked up on all that excitement. And then I, we looked at Chrissy Fowler and, and got Chris, thanks for coming, Chris. And Chris got involved and Bobby Hill got involved. And before you knew it, I mean, we, we were talking to Bobby Hill and by the next morning he had this drawing. I mean, it's, I mean, Bobby's an inspired guy. And, and we got really, we're excited about this possibility. So, you know, and, and one of the things that, that we talked about was, well, Ranch Foods Direct needs a new home. Let's put them down there and be this catalyst, you know, to maybe bring people in. And then I got thinking about, well, well I, I tell the story about Dave's sons were out at St. Francis fishing. And I walked by the pond they were fishing at. And, and I said, hey, guys, how you doing? And they said, oh. Not very good. We, we haven't caught anything, but we, we caught this little one and we're using it for live bait. <laughs> and I got to thinking, yeah, I get that. Uh, but, I, but then I, the more I thought about it, the more I think you need the community behind it, the whole community behind it to make so, so it's not too much risk and burden just on Chris and I, perhaps, or just me or whatever. And, and, and so I got to thinking more about involving the community. And, and so when I look at Colorado Springs, the, the ability to renew a blighted area that needs improvement. The ability to bring people back downtown, and people say, oh, well, you need the residences before you do the public market. And I, I argue that. I say, no, you need the public market, and then the residences go up around it, and that's the lesson of the Milwaukee market. And, the, and, and so I love this Chrissy Fowler area, but think about it from the city's perspective. Is this the highest and best use? How important is this public market to the city of Colorado Springs? I think we got to think about that. Now, and that also is dependent on how big is it? What's it got in it? Has it got everything in it, like the Milwaukee public market? That's what I'd like to see. I'd like to see it be the anchor of downtown and the reason people travel to Colorado Springs to see it and to say, wow, this can get replicated across the country and many other communities. And, and, and so, that's where, we're, that's where I'm at right now. I, I see amazing potential for this to do some awesome things okay, for Colorado so Springs. What's on the list of uses? What's in that market? Well, I see, I, I just go down the list. It, it, it's got food, it, it's got meat market, it's got, it's farmers, got a fish market, it's got produce, market. it's got coffee, it's got Bristol beer, it, it's got a wine shop, with, probably with a lot of Colorado wines. Yeah. It, it's, got, uh, yeah. it's got a bakery, a, a deli. Jeez. It's got a cheese and a cheese making operation. We've got milk producers around here that could, would love to add value to milk and be able to make cheese, like in the Pike Place market in Seattle. Uh, it's got a culinary piece to it. It's it probably got a, a teaching kitchen where we can teach people how to cook. It's probably got a commissary kitchen. So think about all the urban gardens in addition to the, the, to the uh, Arkansas Valley that produce food and, and produce. How can we add value to that? Doug Wiley has truckloads of acorn squash right now. What's he going to do with it? Well, Doug, let's process it. Karen Share needs it all winter long. Marion House needs it all winter long. And we can sell it. We can value add. We can slice, dice, cook, do all kinds of cool stuff there. We need that. The commissary kitchen needs to be a component. Is that commercial kitchen and commissary the same? Thing? Yeah, pretty much, except commissary is probably bigger. It, it's bigger and probably does bigger volumes. And, and actually, if, uh, if we know the businesses in town that need a commissary kitchen, when we do look at food trucks, when we look at mm -hmm. uh, uh, anybody that has uh, distribution needs, um, such as Bob and Gatner, too, they, they also. Right. They and the commissary the kitchen, commercial kitchen, really fulfills that need of, of the cottage kind of industries in town that, that are not qualified through USDA, FDA, or other food safety kind of vehicles. It, 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 they need access to the marketplace, and this gives that to them. And so Karen, share what were the other? I, I'm, I'm getting back to Darcy's first comment really of who, uh, who we, uh, what, what are we serving them? 
and Karen, you had mentioned Karen Share, because we have the general public, of course. Hey, Bob, Arkansas Valley Organic Growers. Right, so it's market access for farmers and it's food access for eaters. Right. So that's who you're serving. You're serving both ends, you know, from the production to the, to the consumption. And, and what I think about is, is, first of all, not, I guess you're right, there's two things. There's who's, who's, what input do we have and then what export do we have? I guess that's where I was, when I was thinking of who, I was trying to think of who are we having down here. Is that what you were getting at first? Yeah, what's the demand? Is it going to come with a uh, one mile radius of downtown? Do you think those people are going to come from two miles away, five miles away? What can the market support? Well, I think the Penn Home Street Market was a pretty good test, wasn't it, Melissa? It was a test. It was a test, and 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 it wasn't, and I, you know, it's it wasn't successful. Uh, but so one of the things that happened with the grocery store was shortly after, right at the same time that we opened, Whole Foods opened, and so there there was an energy in this community of you know having abundance and all you needed, and the Tango Street Market could not provide that abundance, um, and so. You know, there's definitely, I think, then a value in having kind of a market concept downtown that's a little bit bigger to begin with instead of smaller, um, you know, so that there is that opportunity to capture people and bring them in to get things that they can't get in other places as well. Um, and that's kind of where I go with this is you know, what makes, what can make this really special and unique to get our local residents interested and, you know, wanting to get into the downtown community instead of just accessing, you know, their nearest grocery store or their nearest farmer's market during the summer. But what also is going to get tourists to come and visit, um, you know, that this location as well. And so really, Kind of exploring some of those ideas a little bit deeper to see what that brings um, as well. We may have Whole Foods in mind, but Whole Foods was originally trying to be West Side service. They wanted everybody from Woodland Park all the way down uh, coming in, so they were they were very interested in the West Side because they already have the North and East cover, which is pretty much like just ducks in a barrel right there. I might just mention though, Whole Foods is, is not. Who I want to see, and, no, and, and no, it's, we'll right. See. But, but I, I know there's talk. There's been talk there's about well, man. could we get it at Whole Foods, at Trader Joe's, at Sprouts, these kind of places. <clears throat> I want. My vision is something that that adds value to the community and not extract and doesn't extract wealth. Uh, I'm talking about Main Street being so sustainable, local, uh, farmers local. having real access to the <laughs> consumer at the highest values uh, possible, rather than the Whole Foods which is really about blocking farmers' access to the market and extracting wealth from a community. So you know, my, my, pretty much the opposite of, of a whole, whole food. Whole food, whether it's whole, like you said, whether it's whole food, one of these others, if this doesn't get legs, they'll be there before and it will, you know, yeah. public, the, the market will be satisfied by having options close to the west side. Yeah, so and I think, and I think they already, the Whole Foods already thinks it has legs in this location. So I think we just got to find it. Yeah, hey, well, know. we're talking about consumer demand, but what's the tenant demand? What, you know, someone's going to pay for it, and it's going to be through rents, I would expect. Who are the tenants? And, and who, you know, you mentioned you're willing to step in, but... How many square feet does a ranch food need, or the Arkansas Valley produce, or coffee merchant? I mean, that to me is, would be how I look at it. That's going to tell me what uh, my costs, expenses, and hopefully operating income. Now, one, one thing I want to interject here, maybe John, you can step up a little bit. There's this laundry list of what might go on the market, and Mike's basically articulated everything we could possibly think of. I can think of that. So, the question is, and there's even more. The question is, can we phase in anything? Is there a timeline here? Is there something that that we do first? It's a, it's a priority exercise. What would go in first? What would go in second? What would create the demand up front that maybe things further down the line won't have? Well, that, was, that was one of my questions. I forgot my mind. Um, but uh, I, I think I I agree with with you, Mike, that. Um, 
residential would follow a big market, but I also agree with Chris that a market's going to follow that. So it feels like they have to go hand in hand on a more of an incremental basis of doing that. Um, I'm also fearful a little bit, you know, you mentioned the tight home street market uh, not being as successful as, as desired. Um, having uh, having something go in without a catalyst. As an example, if, if Ranch Foods were to go into it, Ranch Foods is a catalyst. However, Ranch Foods, if there are two Ranch Foods, it's saturated a little bit and it's not so much of a catalyst. So I guess that, that's two things is, is the incremental basis and getting both of these things at the same time and not having too large of an overwhelming space that, you know, as, as Ken told me maybe six months ago, you want to go and say it, Ken? Uh, nobody wants to go to a party when there's nobody there. It, it feels empty and it, it's, it's not going to work. Um, but if you, if you fill up a smaller space, and maybe it's a part of the Christie Fowler, you just bite off little pieces of it and really make it look really cool uh, and really work, then you can grow into the rest. But, um, yeah, I'm rambling now, so. <laughs> uh, just in, the timeline you know, on this whole concept is, is something that I think we need to really kind of bore in on, quite frankly, because it's, with, without having a, uh, you're going to have this, you know, in place by, hopefully, uh, it does tend to float, as it has. Uh, and, and what would that mean? In the sound of it, you know, what Mike's saying is we, we need to go in with our guns loaded and be a destination for Denver, not for strictly Southern Colorado, for visitors uh, that are, are new to the area uh, or that are just wandering around downtown wondering why we don't have anything going on. This would be that. Uh, this would be an anchor to make that happen. But, we got, we'd have to go in with our guns loaded. We'd, we'd have to have a full door effort in order to pull the trigger. And how long would that take to put that together? Uh, do we need a year? Do we need two years? Do we need six months? Two months? You know, what, what is it? And what are we trying to hit? Because that will define where we can go. Because if, we, if, we have a, if we've got the resources and we know what we want to do, we just need a place to put it. Then we're looking for a building that exists with parking and access and freight access right now. And if that's what we want to do, then fine. But that, that's a whole different program than going in and potentially building a building. Or right. do we just go in and, and sample this? Do you know, could we set it up for three months, six months, and see what happens? Tell people that this is a limited time offer. We are not going to be here in seven months. Is that a, is that a concept we want to achieve? But timeline is, is really fundamental to what we're looking at in terms of where we want to go and how we want to get there and what we're willing to accept in terms of building structure and access. And, and seasons. Is yeah. seasons season. also part of what we're, what we're dealing with? Yeah, absolutely, because we're in Colorado and our, our growing season is very defined. So if you hope to have any farmer component, you're going to have to do it when the farmers have stuff. However, the one in Denver, the Denver urban market, they have their, their best season is in the winter. They are busier in the winter than they are in the summer. I think that's partly so because think, they don't have as much competition because there's not very many people yeah. doing the year-round thing, which we would also have that. Yeah, so I don't, I don't necessarily think that it would necessarily, I think it might be a boon to the, to the producers. I guess it maybe depends on how you want to spin it. If it's supposed to be a farmer's market, I don't see opening it in the winter because you're not going to have produce. But if it's a public market, it's, if it's a public market, yes, yeah, so both. Yeah, and so, exactly. so now we're starting to get to the business plan. This is the heart of what I was trying to start very, very at the very beginning. What is it that we're doing? And I think this is the big one. Public. Well, Julian, business. tell us about the uh, ferry market. Yeah. So um, the ferry market is kind of like a combination of those both, um, and it has during the, the during the summer. It has three days a week. It has a farmers market right outside the the permanent. Um, Public market. It's um, year round, isn't it? The, the the farmers markets. I think it. Or I think it's I, at least I've been in January. And it's maybe it, maybe it goes down to like two, okay. but um uh yeah maybe it is year round actually. I think it is. Or ferry. The ferry. Ferry building, market. Ferry market. But it's got a year round indoor component right. and then expands outside during the season. Exactly, right. and, and the outside's coming up that farmers market feel. The inside's you know all the value added products and restaurants and cafes and things like that. Um, but you know, as far as so, I mean, I think that would be a great, great thing. Maybe even though in California you can't have uh, farmers markets year-round, 
here it might be we'll have it during the growing season, but then we'll still have the, the, the indoor public market. Yeah, so and, and, and Becky, just to follow up on what you said about the indoor farmers market in Denver, we're in that market. In the winter, it's meat, it's milk, it's cheese, it's all the value added stuff, which is pretty exciting. Good coffee, uh, you know, pastries, it's all that kind of stuff. And then in the summer, they get a lot of competition from all the other farmers markets, so that's why it's slower. Well, and, and are we just not thinking in the right manner, too, because a public market may mean something. When I think of markets, it's whatever people produce or, or understand locally right. that they do. So we are in a position where we're kind of a base in just food. We could actually be what the things you need, the supplies you need, before you, you go off uh, trying to survive in mountain passes uh, to more or less. So, and, and that's gotten very sophisticated now because now it's, it's uh, outerwear and skis. So can, can we start thinking in a public market sense that both food and, and gear or food and what we do are, are kind, of, kind of combined? Because that seems to be what happens in most markets. They sort of take what, where they are as the part of it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, good. I know there's a list of all the businesses in there. Yeah, that's it. Right. Anyway, I don't know if that's a, a start, but I think we're starting to get through the public market food market. And I kind of go with your, your idea there about that kind of outdoor capitalizing on that health and wellness side of things, that other services that would be offered within a market like this would be related to health and wellness in some way. Like a bike I shop. I thought about, you know, do we have available for people to buy and rent, mm -hmm. oh, you know, that kind of thing, but also just, you know, being in some ways, you know, having a core group of, you know, super sophisticated nutritionists and health experts that it could be, you know, there could be a studio there that people are drawn to for health and wellness purposes, whether it's, you know, classes, whether it's, you know, mm -hmm. you know classes on health and wellness or actual physical <coughs> classes with exercise, you know, something that kind of capitalizes on our health and wellness piece. The other side that I see with the market is capitalizing on our heritage and our history. And like what you were speaking about, just take a look at the view. You know, so you're looking at the mountains and it implies a couple of things. It implies a really rich history that our community has. Um, but it also implies, you know, the getting out and enjoying, you know, our landscape and our space in Colorado. So thinking about services, you know, outside of food that would fit into those pieces that would draw people um, that might not always come. So, and then I think about, you know, Ivy Wild, and I don't know that they, you know, they, they have a little yoga studio that's going to be across the street from them. You know, so there are these kinds of, you know, energies and, and talk that are happening already in our community, so can we make this different enough and robust enough that it would stand alone and be interesting and captivating to folks. Um, but I would like to suggest with 20 minutes remaining in this section that we have some defining of the priorities. Like if there were three things or five things that would create the most problems. Uh, what would they be? What would be the things that, you know, in a sense, you anchor this on? Because that's where people are going to, for the most part, do the volume. And can we try to find five of these things that, in your minds, those are the first ones that will draw the people? Well, what kind of food? I mean, the farmer. Both, Coming up. both um, commercial as to being able to buy or prepare food and then food that people can purchase that's at the end of the day. And your farmers mark from the Arkansas Valley and others. I'm looking at, I think uh, the best example that I've visited is Pike, Pike Market in Seattle. What that, what you're uh, given there is you're given some of those that you're suggesting as to services and health and wellness, but it's really anchored around food from all aspects. Um, some processing there as well. Um, why that I think is critical is what I saw there is it really was a boon for the, the economics of then the area, from residential growth to 
other commercial businesses, it was your your center, your draw for those then either consumers through your local residents or your tourists. And they really were the they brought in then that um, economic influx, if you will, that growth to the community. But it was all it's centered around food. And healthy food. Or yeah. Oh yeah, not not yeah. Local, no franchises. Local, local. All local. Yeah. Well, I agree with all of those, so I'm going to go off totally a different direction since we already have all those because I think all those in the top five probably up there already. But what um, I think Melissa even talked about this one time is, you know, we have all these people that have alpaca goats and uh, I mean, I mean, not goats, alpacas and goats and llamas and and you know, in the winter selling all these wonderful gloves and things or hats made with out you know the the wool from the sh if they have goats you know angora goats or whatever um, or if you could have um, somebody that actually makes this is the part you said I think makes shoes and you know it'd actually be a cobbler you know making shoes at the but you know something that's so different than what you would see you know it's not going to you know your regular shoe store and just buying a pair of shoes you go in there and they they make your shoes, and you can even see it. You know things that are that are more of a they're they're kind of a touristy thing in some respects, but they're also and people are like, wow, I could actually go and 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 get my stuff. In. And I know the the llamas are out here back in Black Forest, and this is the scarf I'm wearing from it, or something like that. So I think it's goes back to the local. It's local things, but it's a, something that's also a draw of you know you're not going to see this at Whole Foods or in the mall or something like that. Mm -hmm. So it's totally mm -hmm. different. Do you think people would be attracted to fish? You know, there's a lot of hydroponics and, and fishery, little fisheries around. Do you think? I'm just wondering. I think it's available, but I want to make it a staple. It's not something that's going to, yeah. oh, you can get pikes and fish now mm -hmm. instead of frozen. Right. right. Yeah. I don't think a staple to the community. Can you get your hand up a couple times? Is there, is there well, I, I was thinking about the whole thing and what we're thinking of. I'm thinking about what's, what's the heart of a city? It's downtown. What's the heart of a, a, of a home? It's the kitchen. So we're thinking about a food-based heart to our city, right? And when, we ha when we're looking at the Chris Fowler building specifically, there's, there's a couple proposals out there already in development world where it says a footbridge from America the Beautiful Park basically over to the front of Christie Fowler, all right? And having the, the anchor of Colorado Springs at that entrance would be perfect. And having it focus on food and local products and a local um, focus that makes it very unique to our community because of our heritage, makes all the sense in the world. And so I was just thinking about when I'm thinking about the business model, we can't think about it as a silo. It's not just one project. We're thinking about what we're doing with Colorado Springs proper. Mm -hmm. And we are the heart of that community of Colorado Springs, period. That's why this group is here today, because we understand the value that we're putting into this single project. And um, I love what I'm hearing, and everything's consistent with my beliefs. So then, as we start looking at, at what we have in it, and where it's located, mm -hmm. the business model that we start to start, start take a look at then is, is what is, is downtown appropriate, first of all. You know, I think that's going to be one of the first things we have to just make sure we all understand and decide if that's, that's good. I, I always think it's obvious, but it may not be, so I want it to at least Anyone think bring that out there? there not the place. That seems to be the consent. So, and then, and then uh, has anybody taken a good bike ride around just to see what buildings are available? Because there's empty parking lots, there's buildings. Chris, what do you think so far? Is it so far? Um, well, I love that there's this many people that are passionate about figuring this out. Mm -hmm. um, I don't. I mean, I guess the question is where. I'm absolutely downtown, and I don't care where in downtown, other than it, it needs to be in a spot where we think it's going to be successful. So finding the best spot for the market in downtown is where it should go. How about things? How about the, what we've been talking about in terms of? a need for what it is. I think that's a perspective you share from the downtown partnership. A need for what else we need. Yeah, what is what is that? Uh, you know, once we get food and healthy foods, knowing it's a market, you can get that in a few other places. So there has to be a uniqueness to this that makes it or, or other 
products. Well, I'm even more bigger. pragmatic to it. I, I, I love the story and the authenticity about it being um, Calicrate, had it be local farmers, had it be um, all of which, what, is, what is a unique factor to it. But um, the pragmatic side is um, for downtown to become a neighborhood, we, which we have little pieces of it, right? But to really become a thriving neighborhood where lots of us live and it really becomes its own. We don't have to go out of it necessarily unless we choose to to get essential things. These, the, the market, um, either a traditional market or something that's more authentic to our community, our region, is an essential piece to being able to grow the rooftops. And, and the, you know, which one comes first? It's always the chicken and the egg, but it doesn't really matter because every city's done it differently. So back to your business plan, it's really about how do we figure out um, what is this darn thing going to cost? What's an affordable way to do that? How do we sustain it? Who's the human capital and the, and the, and the monetary capital coming from to make sure that this thing um, has sustainability? And I think that's a, that's a pretty pragmatic business plan that needs to, be, that needs to be put together to figure out how to plug those pieces together. So Chris, let me ask you, just to sort of clarify, I mean, it seems a couple basic approaches. One is we get a master plan for something really big and we, it all opens at once. And the other general idea is that we are phasing something in. We're doing something that's very easy, and then as we expand, we expand. Um, from your point of view, is there a, a pro and a con to either of those approaches? Is this the kind of thing we need to raise money and buy the land? Is this something we can lease? Is it something we can rent? Uh, is it a, a replicable lease for 10 years, or possibly? Well, what, what seems to work for you here? Well, I, I think you have all the flexibility in the world. Uh, you have a ton of flexibility to, to pick and choose. Uh, if you want to go really significant, it's really a, that's, that's, do we have the muscle to figure out how to do that? Or do we start with something that is less risky, that is more palatable and, and something that we can get into business relatively soon and, and grow, grow it. I, I think that there is probably uh, a lot of sense to figure out something that is growable versus something that is the end all be all right up shoot that makes, makes some sense here. But anything jump out at you is what we would start? Where we would start? I mean, what would we start with? We're going to sort of do the phased approach. Um, what would be the first phase? I don't want to put Mike on the spot here, but if there was a way for his business to be downtown, because he's already a destination, and people go to that spot because it's because it's it's got a great product. It, but yet it's in a very strange retailer's place. It's in an industrial part of town. So how could we, if, if that was a goal, if you could get, and let me take Mike off the hot seat, if there was an anchor component to this that could start it to get going, be it the farmer's market or some other element of the, of the market, that we could get some degree of permanence and, and, and it was done well enough that it didn't look like it was just thrown up. I think you could, if you start with something like that, it, that success will 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 build, and we will be able to grow over time. Yeah. I'm going to put Mike back on the hot seat just for a second because. Excuse me, before you do it, and sure. I hate to be rude and come in and leave, but I'm delighted you're all here. I'm very supportive of what's going on. But it's only half of us. Right? <laughs> yeah, I can tell you you're coming up. That's why. I thank you. I didn't want to put you on the spot. I figured. Thanks. Thanks. Sorry, for coming in now. Thank you. So, with thinking about. And you put under catalyst, you know, the local story, and then there's Mike, there's Ranch Foods mm -hmm. One of the things Mike always talks about is, you know, the whole meat cutting industry and how it's such a lost art, and how interesting it would be, you know, it, it, to have that meat market as kind of a core piece down there with cutting demonstrations and things that are going on that people can actually see. Because when you go to Ranch Foods, you have to have a special tour to walk through the back. But to have, you know, something, I mean, we're, you know, there are definitely plenty of vegetarians that, you know, don't want to, you know, be a part of that. 
but I think there are those vegetarians also appreciate what Ranch Foods Direct tries to do. And so to see that as kind of an anchor, you know, would be really pretty neat. And, and that was part of our original plan, plan Bobby, is, is we took the big there. Chrissy Fowler, it's already on paper. Ranch Foods is at the west end and the public market is at the east end. But wow, was that a big risk. <laughs> it, we were looking at four million, essentially, and that, and that and that was before I spent money to put my part in, which is two million. So we're we're looking at six million, and, and so, so that was a lot. That was a lot to choose. We, we've run full construction numbers on Christy Fowler, going from what was going to be culinary school, ranch food, the public market, farmers market. Um, the uh, urban garden, um, a full-blown rework of that block. And we were around 17 million. Uh, so say it again. 17 million. Right. right. 15 to 17, and, and ran, ran the numbers. Um, for Mike to use that building, <coughs> you have to get a raised um, refrigerated floor. I mean, there are some things that work great because it exists to help keep costs down, and there is things that inherently, no matter where it goes, is going to cost it. But so we backed that down from a $17 million project to about a four to five million dollar project by not really changing much structure, but by changing the look of the building. So it doesn't have skylights running the whole top of it. It doesn't have, you know, you, you pair it back as we as Chris was saying there for a minute ago, is you know, it's not the end-all, be-all design to start with, but it, it facilitated ranch food, it facilitated a public market, it facilitated a farmer's market, and some form of plaza that could be incrementally phased in for a, a bigger facility, or it was a plaza that could be used by the community, could be used as your farmer's market summertime where, um, it could be an art market, a farmer's market, you know, that it does build that symmetry of a central location. And so we've got the numbers to kind of say, based on the structure, the HVAC, all the things that would need to be done to bring this site to fruition is in that four to five million, four to six million dollar. And, the, and that's without land purpose. That's, that's oh, what, that's what that was? That was what Chris being involved to the level Chris would have to be right. to do the project. Right. Which, through the conversations at that point, were he would be working towards that end as a developer and as a <clears throat> landowner for that. If Mike's stepping in on this end and then someone grabs the piece of a public market and makes it reality so that Mike's not doing a six million dollar project or Chris isn't doing a three to five million dollar donation for the city. So that was kind of where it just stopped. Yep. Which at that point. Can I can you clarify this for yeah. me? So could you so what you're saying is it could actually be broken down into phases? So like a five million fa for phase one and then going up to however many phases up to the 17 million to get the whole well, thing done? Yeah, I mean, and Mark can speak to this from a pricing standpoint. It's, there is a certain amount, and if you go back to the, <coughs> to the side, the structure where the little trucks are all backed in. Mm -hmm. That's an existing building that's a little warehouse building. That is punching doors, no air conditioning, no heat, maybe some strip heating, but it is literally Farmers coming with trucks, loading dock is supposed to be in an outside public or, or, or farmer's market. It's, you walk down the middle and trucks back in and, and that right. one right there. Uh -huh. So that this is where you'd be, people would walk, trucks would just feed from there. And that could be a seasonal deal, that could be, um, you know, but that was kind of the farmer's market. Was this where the old door shop used to be? Is this, is this the block? I'm trying to figure out something. Yeah, what you're what's seeing, the orientation? What you're seeing basically there is the yeah. yeah. center. Yeah. 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 Oh, you got the, so, you got the center. center. So, so here's okay. this is the parking garage for um, Pipe Speak Center. Mm -hmm. All this is showing what housing could look like if you put that kind of structure here. What could start to happen on all those 
basically blocks that are either vacant or have very small or old developments. The whole concept of, of, of this running on Vermont was exactly what everybody has said. It is a gateway back to the park that needs a catalyst like this to add that gateway component over to the park. So, um, and then this, this was a community garden. Ranch food was <clears throat> right in through here. And then on top of ranch food was, uh, and I think you can scroll through and you'll see different pictures of it, but that was, um, would, was really a, commun a community open rooftop that would look over the park, over the mountain, as Dave was saying, just an un unsurpassed view that the city offers from that point. Um, yeah, I love that. All right, so this was all just built out and up on top of Ranch Foods. Our um, freezer cooler area. Yeah, yeah exactly. And what supported this off to the side, if you could go from here and go back, was the upper level would be more community-centric. Um, it had a place for the kitchen, had big meeting rooms, it could be divided up, could be um, culinary. You know, it was really the upstairs was geared more for public use and how it would be divided up and then the lower levels was, was all the, the marketplace. And that's the $17 million build up? No, this was actually dialed back to, okay. I mean, that was dialed back to the most part for what um, was repriced out at the, at the five to six million range. Okay. So let me ask more. But just keeping in mind with, that's the with, with Norwood being involved. Right. That's no. not buying the land. That's no, Norwood. No, no, no. That's Norwood stepping in as, as a participant in this for redevelopment of one of his pieces of property. Yeah, go ahead, and then I want to ask Mark. Sure. Uh, Bobby, just in terms of and, and Mike, you know, when you look at that dollars and cents thing, I think the incremental concept kind of goes out the door at some level because you, the investment required to put this in is not something you can pick up and go plot somewhere else when you decide to move Mars. There's a map that's so on that needs stage. To be if you go in a down. spot where it can grow, will grow, and mm -hmm. that type of investment requires it, it will right. succeed in right. that spot. Because right. when, I, when I look at that, and after sort of mulling it over for several months, where I'm at right now is paid for. Mm -hmm. Yeah. To go down there, I get to spend $2 million plus <laughs> pay rent on double, I, I, I would totally double whatever I'm paying right now. What is the land? Well, what is that the, land down there. Or what could, is the cost of the, everything right now? Chrissy Fowler. Chris, yeah, that whole. We were, square footage. Price. Well, we were looking at between four to six million dollars. Uh, that's what they're, that's what. We were looking at basically four million and then I was going to have another two million to get into the deal to, to get my freezers, coolers, all that metal structure and everything that I'd have to put the 17 million dollar project actually yeah. if you scroll back here yeah. some too or even go to yeah the, which building it was actually Bobby was that so the 17 million dollar was keeping these two buildings and then, is that the one with all the trucks back up yes yeah. no yeah. this is that's here oh that's so it was Thank keeping you. this it was keeping this it was building a culinary school on top of this ranch food here public market well this was all culinary um, and um, the Alamosa uh, uh, produce. Oh, and then this was yeah. the public market was going to be here, mm -hmm. and it was going to be tying these two structures together, rebuilding mm -hmm. those as a full, and then all this would become kind of center plaza. Um, and that was the big, you know, using everything that was there to its fullest, utility, you know, best use. And uh, this was going to have a, it was a crossway skywalk, or, um, Skylighted area that connected these two would be two floors. But and Bobby, didn't you have some residential in the upper left? Didn't you oh, have yeah. a residential here. building as well? This, this section right here was going to be residential on that development. It's just, you know, when we, when we ran that number, it was like 17 million. But that's a full development that would be like, you know, made, wave the magic wand with the lottery, and it's and it's it, it sustained everything and it, and it had. The ability for everything. So, all West Views, you know, this this piece right here would be rebuilt to where you could still have the loading docks behind it, and everything is faced out to the west, um, three to four stories high. Um, so, you know, the site the site works for lots of different things, and what we did is pair it back to 
just utilizing this facility because it was the one that had the least amount of work needing to be done to it. It's got plumbing, it's got electrical, needs a lot of those upgrades to it, but from starting from this, which is basically has no electric, no plumbing, and having to bring it up, really started to add that cost. Because that's really an open shed kind of down. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and, and so here's where I'm at now. Stay where I'm at for my big production stuff. You know, breaking the carcasses and all of the big, big stuff, the, the heavy work. And then I'd be happy to anchor a beautiful meat market where we do a lot of cutting in front of the customer. It's all fresh, none of the, no package stuff essentially. And, and uh, just really put out a beautiful real meat market where the cutting is done right in front of you with you know, carcasses hanging in the back. And you know, it, it, it would really be a beautiful deal. And, and I will say but that, that gives, but that expands my retail, which is where I really want to go. So that I fulfill everything I need uh, and stay where I'm at and still get more retail. So let me expand your retail as in you keep your retail spot up on Fillmore or Yeah, you keep, Street? it's on El Paso, El Paso Street. El Paso. You keep that one for that community that, that likes right, it. Right. And then downtown would be a fresh market. The so we, we, larger we'd get people from yeah. our community going downtown for some other things. I will know, say that they'd be that different this, venues. Mm -hmm. with this building, putting ranch food in there, which was a catalyst to help chew up some of that building, it really isn't big enough for the public market that I think everybody's talking about. When you start talking about community rooms mm -hmm. and, and you start looking at Milwaukee and, and Seattle, those locations, this gets to be much more compacted and it really would limit, I mean, you could start to limit, you know, well, can you have flowers in there? And, you know, can you have this and that? And you start having to say, well, you get it, but it's more kiosk type deal versus something that might be the draw that Milwaukee has or, or Seattle has. Right. I have a question for Mark. Uh, when we talked about developing this pro forma business plan, that we weren't sure where Bobby was at. Now we've heard he's done a ton of work on this numbers. Is there something else that we need? Should we take his four to five million dollar markup and say this is kind of the basis for what we want to do and go from there or do we need something else? You tell me. Right. Well the, the, the one thing that I think we need is did you guys figure out how to perform or with that? Because knowing that knowledge of the amount of money you're putting into it, did you figure out how much vendors would pay to be there as an example? No. We didn't go that far but, but I get the calculation the developer mentality or developer approach to it and it's basically what, what does it cost times 12 percent is your yearly rent mm -hmm. and, and that gets you up there to some mighty high prices that we can't afford that, that you're the folks we're talking about getting in there cannot afford that it, this is not the shops at Briargate and, and so we've got to figure out how do we get this thing lower and, and that's when I start thinking about who owns it is it a consumer cooperative like the Merck in, in Lawrence, Kansas, that's been around for 30 some whatever years. Is it like Milwaukee, where it's owned by the public and then a board operates it and manages the leasing of the building and the operations uh, part of it? Because we can't afford the typical, you know, let's build it and Bass Pro will come kind of a thing. No, I think if, if you're going to do a project like this, uh, you dream big. You got one chance, you know, and so you think big. And and the idea, yeah, seventeen million dollars. That's hard for for one person or a group of a hundred people. That's hard. But the idea of like your other markets to go in with a public private partnership and make it first class. Don't use a nineteen twenty shed that you got to put plumbing in. And, and throw up a little sheetrock, you know? Put something that's substantial and sustainable. But that's just my opinion. You, you, know, you know, going through all the images that have been floating around and the, and yeah. the emails and, and whatnot, and I always try to go to the pictures and I always try to look for the architecture. What can we do? I did the, uh, I did the trust building 25 years ago, uh, and this was sort of a stopgap, you know, bare bones approach to doing that building. <laughs> And hey, uh, you, you know, you don't have to spend a lot of money. You can take, as long as the structures are viable, sure, if they're falling down, forget it. Yeah. But, you know, you can work with structures if you've still got, you've got the utilities, you've got a lot, you've got foundations, 
you know. And that's so, what Bobby did. So you can you can did. pare these things down, you know. We can, can we do it all the time, you know. Dreaming big, though, I like the fact that, you know, Steve, you started out thinking that this wants to be a nuts and bolts, what are the needs and how much does this cost meeting? And, and, and the first speaker, Mike, you know, immediately went to the vision, mm -hmm. you know, and I think and that goes back to what you say about thinking big. The vision is that, you know, this is, and it's not a farmer's market, it's a year-round farmer's market and it's got tons of stuff and it's all about food and drink. And it's a destination, it's a festival place. It's where you go to have fun. Even if you don't want any food or drink, you just go there. Imagination celebration is going to happen here, all kinds of events. It needs to focus on, uh, I would argue, Bobby, that it needs to focus even more on Vermaho than it does. Vermaho is the new Tejon Street that connects downtown Pioneer Plaza to the America, the beautiful park. Um, I believe with the new uh, tax uh, initiative that just passed that there's actually funds for um, starting to think about about the pedestrian overpass needs to be more than a footbridge. Here was yes. I thought on this. So, the Burma Hall is north facing. It is shaded. It is cold. It is not a. It's not the. Even though I agree with, I mean, and I pushed Mike on this to, to start with, and we just kept coming. And it was like a sheet of ice the whole time we, every time we were going out there. <laughs> Not that you couldn't work around that, but it is a, it's it, the south exposure. The south side was just much more of a pleasing environmental aspect. Well, to the shadow lines place. only extend so far. You know, when, once it becomes a, a new Tejon Street, mm -hmm. and once we get this big festival uh, market thing going on, um, you've got the cattle. This is an instantly low dough. Uh, now, I'll be, you know, before it's even, you know, as soon as construction starts, the, uh, you know, the work on all the residential is going to start happening because all of a sudden people say, wow, we've got something going on. I will admit, this, we talk about the anchor, this can single-handedly change the entire Colorado Springs landscape, period. We're looking for a single entrance into our city. This is it. You know, this says, welcome to Colorado Springs. We're, this is where you want to be. And I say on this project, and this project specifically, dream big. And then we'll find the people coming from around saying, you guys are visionary. That's exactly what you should have been doing. And so here we come. And I really like the Zed's market idea. Yeah. Yeah. But I also like, I was the fruited plains market idea guy. Yeah, I like so, oh, I like yeah. that. I like <laughs> well, you, can, you can understand that most everybody kind of got going on this in the last week or so. You know, Mike and I have been chewing this for, like I said, almost a year now. So. Um, let me ask uh, Ms. Becky. I wanted to make sure Darcy got to say what she was going to say and then Dave. Becky, Darcy, and Dave. Well, I just wanted to, you know, going off what Ken was saying, have we talked to any of the restaurants? Um, I'm thinking, of, you know, besides you being live bait Mike, um, getting some people to participate with you. Has anybody talked to, like, Farley? I mean, maybe Farley's thinking it's too small still in Manitou and it's time for her to make a jump. Your friend with the tapas on, I forget his name, on West, Jay. his place is ridiculously small. And so, have we even talked to any of the, the Pete the Plains people is who I'm thinking of, you know, the people who have already made a commitment to be local rather than trying to bring in somebody new. So have we talked to any of them? And who would be the person to do that talking? And even if they haven't thought about it, it might go ding in the middle of the night, it's like, holy, well, you never know unless you talk to them. So, have we talked to anybody in the rest? Who in the restaurant businesses have we talked to? The Marguerite. It's a great place. It's way the hell up north. I never go there except for the environmental forum, you know. So, I mean, maybe they're ready to expand. You know, the only way you can well, make money. If, is Mike, if Mike doesn't take half the structure, then you have a lot more. Opportunities for you could have an anchor restaurant. It's higher yeah. benefit use. Higher benefit yeah. use and, 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 and more of a draw. Yeah. I mean, and just I agree that Mike, I agree that Mike's um, it is a larger portion of what you see when you go in, and I said the meat cutting and all that. I mean, we've got already designed into that. You could lop off his his warehouse side and still have what was going to um, you know work for that, but. The downstairs, you know, whether that's 
an open atrium or whether that's got a floor and you know more space. All those things. But first we have to get the word out, don't we? And right. say, how do we even know who's interested? Yeah. Regardless, and how and what they bring. Has anybody? I mean, but ben, who's I, I, I don't. Eggs? You know, we talk to restaurants all the time. And, and I think with this going in, you would have more restaurants come up and be built in the area or. But, but don't we need them now? Be don't we need them like now, kind of going okay? I, I think you go forward. Because Avoc doesn't have anybody. So I mean, yeah. we want Avoc, but yeah. they, we need more bait. Yeah. yeah. Well, can I go back? Now we have that four million dollar mark, or which you see what I see. You you started to say something and someone cut you off. I just wanted to see if you. Uh, just thinking about the four million dollar mark. Are there other locations? You know that makes sense. That um, is at the that provides the same opportunities. That provides opportunity to start smaller and grow, and that need to be explored. It's easy to get sucked in on one idea, and has that all been flushed out? So we have a hand over there directly in response. I, I'm, I'm kind of. And your name is? I'm, I'm Aaron Briggs with APA, okay. um, and I'm getting the same feeling that I think. I think this particular site is tough to be incremental on, just because it's, it's a little bit out of the way. And if you build something small there, I don't think it's gonna it's gonna attract. It's not gonna be a magnet with something small on that big site. So maybe the incremental steps are to do something smaller in another spot that's higher profile, that obviously leads into a move to this bigger. You know, uh, maybe it's just a retail, just a, a combination of a couple different retailers that then you could. That could, that could build up some energy that leads to this bigger building. You're not going to get tourists walking down here. <coughs> you know, so if you say the tourists are part of it, I mean, to, are you, do you really think we're going to get tourists to walk down Vermaho from the Wyndham and the Antlers and then make the corner to come down here? How many of us naturally go? Well, I think that, I think that it could be great, but if you calculate in tourists being part of your People coming to buy things first off and right now. How? What's going to bring them there? What's you know? I mean, it's it's out of the way. And if you went, but if you went big, yes, I can see that happening. If you have to start smaller and you have Calicrate in there and you have three or four other produce vendors and a cheese vendor and a bread vendor, what's going to bring the tourists to it? Is what I'm questioning. Immediately, yeah. unless you were to go big. So, you know, are you are you going to walk down from a hoe to it? Is what I'm questioning and putting out that pragmatic question. Yeah, that's, that's my concern too, Darcy. Is that you know, if we if we can't go all at once, all in to make this, then if we just put a little bit in there, is it going to go and, and get enough legs to, right. to go and, and make it work? So maybe there's another location. Closer to the heart of our already existing downtown, that a tourist would walk over and maybe buy a pre-made pre sausage because they're not going to be buying the raw meat because you can't go back and cook it in your hotel. But they would buy the alpaca scarf, and I love that addition to the food market and the prepared foods that are in there. But maybe it's closer walking distance to what we already have, and then you can go out. That's what I'm questioning. One of the things about this location is this. And, and once again, I'm jumping to the big, to the big Lodo picture, you know, in the future. This location is very prime real estate. Right at the end of that bridge, right next to the park, this is, you know, it's, it's one of the most attractive things. That, like, that exacerbates the problem with making it, you know, making the dollars work with, with, with vendors. Um, incrementally, I think there's a lot of places down there where where you could do a year-round farmer's market. Scrutinizing the pics of the architecture, you see at all these places, there isn't much. You just need a space, you know? And I would argue that it needs to open up to the outdoors somehow. Mm -hmm. And I think this, this year-round farmer's market idea, I think that lends itself perfectly to this incremental urbanism. Just set it up. Just, just set it up and just do it. Do it temporarily. And they will come. Or as potential anchor, is there you know the infrastructure we talk about growing incrementally? One of the things is you'd have an investment in infrastructure 
and what other people we would have that would have an investment in infrastructure that could start somewhere else incrementally if we start would be would be one question I have. If we start somewhere else, mm -hmm. I'm can totally you back open. up a trailer? I'm right? totally open to looking at all the alternatives. And that's why we have a whole bunch of people in the room. <coughs> I mean, I took a tour the other day with Greg Huesgen, yeah. the, the German guy. Man, this guy, whoa, he's got all kinds of ideas. And, and we're all over town. We're, we're, from, we're from Colorado City to down on Wasatch, Weber, whatever railroad track. You know, we're everywhere. And we're at the, we're at the uh, Goodwill or Salvation Army building. I mean, all kinds of stuff bouncing around. So it'd be, and Darcy, I know you're real familiar with kind of right north here, but I'd love to look at some other alternatives. Locations. Because I think what, what you've done, Bobby, is put together all the pieces in this one location. So I, I think we can then consider, because part of this is, is what can be relocated? What kind of pent up need do we have for other businesses like yours to come down? And what they, what are we doing in town that's, that's both commissary related, uh, that is restaurant related, even for, uh, it, it really is, is I'm not worried about tricks. You know, I guess, well, I'm sorry. Now I'm from recorder point. I'm stepping on recorder for a minute. I'm not worried about tricks because we, the last thing we should be worried about is other people using it. Is we got to make it good for us. Yes. The best we can there. We have fun there. Yeah. If we have fun there, then I'm not worried about anybody else. They'll all come. So I think that's going to be one of the first things. So, so where's the place we're going to have the most fun to do this? Because I think, Bill, you're exactly right. This whole festival, this whole idea. Um, just what do we want to see? What, what will inspire us to make this work? And I think that's going to be this where, where is a big question. I love, and this is again a bias, I think Bill and I share, or just I love open big structures that, and Bobby, no doubt, is that, is that uh, you just feel like you're in a warehouse of barn. Yeah, uh, that's. Um, that's right, and, but there are several places like that here in town. Uh, yeah, but I thought and there aren't many though. So I think we've got a few other things. But I thought we have to start first start with the idea of who do we want to start looking at engaging to make this so we can fit the space not only to you and your infrastructure needs, or temporary or permanent, however that is, but but anybody else that we see want to bring in here because I'm starting here you know, between housing and. They, we had some great uh, the educational piece of this. Uh, is there uh, is there a culinary school that can move here that is already up on that space? Uh, so this is going to take some of that. Is there another need for beer? Uh, Always. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> Bristol has one. I'll, I'll answer that one. Uh, there, there was a project was just Bristol? Mike uh, yeah. down in uh, San Antonio where they took the old pearl. Um, yeah. Sure. Brewery and converted it to a public market. Aveda right. Institute's in there. Mm -hmm. um, I've talked to Aveda Institute about this location, yeah. in which they'd be very interested. Again, you know, it's like it's always everybody's interested, and it all makes yeah. great sense. It's where we, where Mike and I and Chris, you know, came to once before. Here's a here's a dollar amount, and who steps forward? Yeah. And, um, you know, I, I was hoping, based on this, that Mike would be able to speak to that public market board type thing, is how you really build that to where it isn't Calgrate or we got to get three other restaurants to come in here and do that, that you really do set it up as something where the community could own it and, and then it could be a $17 million dollar property uh, for yeah. Okay, Ray, I, hold on, Ray. I'd like to go with Dave and then is it Julian? Yeah, that's it. And then uh, back to Ray, just to make sure he's good. When Chris left the room, he said, what did he say? It was chicken or egg, and it's really not chicken or egg. It's ham and eggs. And the question is, you know, when... Are you committed chicken, or are you involved? That, that's the, oh, yeah. that's oh, the deal, okay. right? Yeah. <laughs> because I think Chris, because we've been around it a lot more, he's definitely interested in this, and he is definitely willing to put some skin in it. He doesn't want to be responsible for it. And I think that's like anything else. He's, I mean, he's talked about donating the land to a, to an entity. He's talked about putting uh, reduced it. But, I mean, at some point, he owns, like, I think whoever said, it's a very attractive piece of land in an area that will become 
something more than it is today, whether it's a Lodo or whether it's a baseball stadium or whatever. It's, it's too prime of an area with great views and, and location to downtown, and it's going to become something. The question right. is what? And does a community come behind and say it needs to be this versus a developer coming in and going, it's going to be this? But that commitment is really important. Mm -hmm. And that's where, as Mike was saying, if it can be a public-private partnership, then all the value added, we're not talking, in my mind, about moving cafeteria from the west side. We're not talking about stealing more restaurants right. from the existing town. We're talking about creating income, and value added, mm -hmm. that is for us here. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's really what's important. And, and I'm going to say, frankly, keeping all foods out. Because yeah. that's, yeah. that's well, not good for us. Actually, that's what you said. Yeah. You're always again and keep all foods out. Oh, yeah. And I, you know, believe me, I mean, I've heard, I've heard from other people, you know, when we talk about this, go, We've got to get this ahead of Whole food because they're coming for round two because they see what they've already controlled on the north side and they'll control it down here because I mean I'm I'm on the west side I'll, I'd rather drive here to Whole food than I went up to that Whole food and, and my other you know I don't have a lot of options you know and so it's, it's one of those things. Maybe now is ready to expand. Okay, how about back to Julian? Yeah. Um, I was just saying one of the things that we talked about a little bit earlier was like the five things that we want to concentrate on, the kind of the anchors. I think one of the like, non-food or non-product things I see is like the space and having like people come in to like a park zone and, and be attracted in that sense. Um, I know that in like the ferry building, one of the things that you get people and I think a lot of these other markets, you get people coming out of this area not to buy anything, but just to like, go hang out and then you go down down by the bay, onto these beautiful docks, look at the Bay Bridge, and you know, or take a run down there to this beautiful park. And I think because there's the, the if you get a connector pedestrian to the bridge, Trail. exactly, you can like kind of have the joggers come through and it's like a beautiful little park and you can have like a little coffee in there. Like that's that's what I see. And so I think having like a beautiful landscape and like the urban garden is incorporated into that um, is really important as one of those anchor pieces. Um, and then also what we said about get, getting businesses on board early, I think that's another thing that was done at the, the ferry building was, I know there's some like, farmers and it could be interesting to get growers and see what their like, feasibility is, is, how much they're willing to pay, how much they have in their budget and stuff like that, and getting them on board as far as getting like, a permanent installment in, in the, within the building and maybe also uh, a um, the, you know, farmer's market aspect to it as well. But I know like, when you have that, like, culinary facility where you can do value, value added and these farmers are thinking like okay maybe I'll like open up a little cafe there's there's a I worked in a, a cafe this summer that was Frog Hollow Farm which is an all stone fruit farm and they now have like this little cafe that does baked goods and they put their stone fruit in there and the baked goods and they've got all these value added things because they have that space and they were the first tenants in the very building. So they would talk to you beforehand. Um, and I know there's a, there's a few of the tenants in the, in the building that would talk to you beforehand and then they got kind of filled out as as that, as that space became attractive. So I think talking to the businesses early is really important. Uh, I don't know, where's the ferry market? The ferry building in, in San Francisco? Right. I don't know where. Is that the ferry? It's south of the ferry. Oh, yeah, sorry. Yeah, you know where the Bay Bridge is? It's like the clock tower. It's, yeah, it's right. It's the it's most right iconic the land. It's, land it's in every movie land we see. Yeah. It's the clock tower next to the Bay. Exactly. Okay. So I just think, I want to talk to a couple of things like that you said. Mm -hmm. I think getting people on board early, other businesses that want to make a commitment. So. I want to like reduce the risk that Mike has to take because I don't want him to like be taking all of the risk to do all of this. We have other people, you know, that have businesses that want to contribute or want to get on board. I think the earlier we contact them and get them involved in the game, the better. Um, I also think, you know, having this as a vision on this site is great. It gives you something visual to think about. Um, but I think we also need to have other alternatives too. Um, and kind of have either that incremental phased approach or the all-in approach, have two, you know, two ideas. Um, and those both do different things. You know, the phased approach lets you, you know, as you build, build out bigger. 
Um, and this one, you know, you can just go all in and kind of figure it out as you go and build it. Um, I also, you know, want to talk to you about how in the urban environment, in especially the retail setting, um, malls are dying. There's no malls anymore being built, and the malls here are pretty much dead. There's a great opportunity for us to utilize that component of it too, and you know, have all of those residential areas and the sites be mixed use retail on the bottom. Um, and to have a more retail aspect of it that has that bigger draw. Um, the urban environment I think is, in this town is set up for that right now. Um, and I also think that as many uses, there's many things you can put into it as far as like the aesthetic appeal of the beauty of actually having the park there, having it multifaceted. Um, this town is a town where people drive. It's 200 square miles. If we're going to have people come here, some people are going to drive here. So if you have it, um, have as, like fulfill as many uses as it can for them so it becomes not maybe a one-stop shop, but a half-stop shop. So they come and spend the afternoon there. Um, I think that is a great way to go. But you'll probably have to incrementally do that. But to have that whole vision, to have that all culminate together, um, I think is a good plan. But I also think, you know, like I said, to have two visions or to figure out, you know, an alternative. Tracks. Right. And actually that feeds into what Darcy was just saying about being close to other things. So mm -hmm. that, because they're starting to put they're starting to put things that I would never have believed into new shopping areas because the idea is, and first of all, as a man, I'm not going to be the one down. Ninety five percent of the shopping is done by women. Everything and, and women are multitaskers and want to be at convenience and so actually there are some shopping centers being set up even for mammograms. So you can, while you shop, you can actually even get your health checked and taken care of while you're while you're there. That's what Ray's talking about. This is this is part of, of what we're seeing people needing to do. Multitask. We park ones. What can you get done in those in that time? It's a new retail environment that's happening. It's incredible, you know, and it's happening like everyone's talked about. You know, on local organic level, because every community is different. They all have different needs. Um, and then that local community level also focuses in on what you're purchasing too. People are more aware of what they're purchasing at a local level. Um, I, don't, I don't see these, sorry, one second. I don't see these being two different tracks per se. I think you, you have this grand vision and, and Bobby's created this grand vision. Um, I think the other track, the incremental track, works toward this. You know, yes. It builds that it's energy dangerous. for downtown so that this yeah. can be realized. So it just looks Is this location yeah. or? Perhaps, I mean, um, it, it will go ahead, you know, it will be a very successful location, and I, my fear, though, is it's going to be too successful, it's going to be too expensive of land for this to actually be in there. And if the land is not owned and occupied, who's to say, well, I just got the Sky Sox put downtown, and they're going right there, so, sorry, your lease is up. And, and this site, actually, on one plan, has been done, what had Sky Sox Stadium there, you know, which, oh, so, right. that wouldn't... You know, this site is tough because big money kind of wants to happen there in this in this in the future. But that's exactly why this site is the best for this all important thing that we're talking about. And you know, it, it would just be such a catalyst; the, the whole area would boom incrementally. I think. You know, we talk a lot about big plans. Um, there's been a lot of big plans down here over the last 20 years. I, so I like the incremental approach at whatever convenient building works. I think we should just build something now. <laughs> you know, as for as minimal cost as possible, a la the Better Block project. I would, well, first, there are two things. Uh, I did the five things, like you said. So basically, it came down to food, beverages, local products, health and wellness, and events is kind of the five top things, is what I've heard from everybody. But, um, you know, Coming from where I'm, you know, work with nonprofits and when they do capital uh, campaigns and things like that, um, it's much. It sounds, you know, maybe not not the way to go, but it's much easier to get more money than it is to get less money if you're going to go to a foundation, and if it's going to be set up from like a Milwaukee board where it's a nonprofit board, then you're going to be able to get in organ, um, funders that are, you know, willing to to put the money in towards that and then you don't have to worry about you know, venture capitalists 
and all this other stuff. Not that that, you don't want that too. I think you need both. But, um, you know, being able to go in and say, this is phase one and we're going to do this part of it and then we're going to do the trucks where the restaurants can come and buy everything in bulk will be the phase two. So whatever we get to the, whatever money we get, that's the phase we'll complete and then we'll go on to, the, if we get it all, we'll do all the phases. So it just continues from there. But um, to me, you're, you know, it's like 20 million because you figure the land, five million, three to five million just for the land. But, um, I don't know what it, how much it is, but um, that's, you know, something to think of is, you know, if it's going to be coming from a nonprofit type status, it's going to be under Green Cities, it's going to be under Pikes Peak Community Foundation as a fiscal agent until it takes off on its own. And then you have all the people that want to do the venture capital to come in and support the, the people that come in. And and uh, per, and then once the sustainability begins, they they get their kickback then. Perfect. Are you gonna be our grant writer? Sure. All right. Um, I just wanted to mention the urban farmer. It might be nice to have some support for them there too. Um, the urban farmer, people keep chickens, their backyards, and uh, bees. We need to processing, washing, and packing area for all the chickens in the city. Yeah. And then we need to expand the factor of chicken to a hundred. Rather than six. Ten. 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 <laughs> I agree. I totally agree. Beekeeping, yeah. business. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Canning and all that kind Local of stuff. Local honey. You know, oh, good. Whenever it's, there's an opening, I got just another well, well, let, me, let me just mention that we're, we're about a half hour to four o'clock. So I, I definitely want to hear from Mike and Mark and Bobby and John about kind of where we go. But my immediate, my inter intermittent question is, on this pro forma thing, because we kind of thought that's one of the outcomes we wanted to come to, are we halfway at least, or 90% there with what Bobby Hill has already done? Is it a matter of taking what Bobby Hill has already done and kind of well, that's the design, tweaking that? That's the design, but what's the business model? Do we know the, the cost that the farmer can rent the okay. stock? Okay, so we need to, to take that as a basis for the cost side mm -hmm. and then do some kind of analysis on the revenue side, right? Yeah, and I'm assuming you haven't done that yet. Have, have anybody, sorry, you're the farmer. Yeah, well, I was going to say, um, I had a meeting with Susan this morning um, from ABOG, and I mean, they're it sounds like they're fairly committed to Ivy Wild, and they're really stretched. I mean, the Avoc farmers are stretched really thin right now. So, in terms of renting space or putting out money, I, do, I mean, I don't think it's feasible. No, it's, I agree. I don't think the farmers can do anything. They've already got enough investment. They yep. need their space that doesn't cost them yep. anything, really. And they were. I mean. Okay. Really, they need. I mean, we have so many farmers markets right now that they're they're actually losing. They just they can't they can't afford to staff anything. Um, so I mean I, I mean I, I love this vision. I love it. But I'm I'm worried about where the food is. I mean the urban farmer I think is fantastic. If we could tap into that and to multiple families and somehow house that there, that would be amazing. Well, I also think that Avon doesn't step in that that creates a niche. And there's other farmers out there that we don't know about, like those brothers that are out in Calhan somewhere, and they're doing everything, mm -hmm. and they're selling everything locally. Maybe they would come in. You know what I mean? Maybe it's yeah. maybe okay. it's time for new because we actually there aren't enough farmers, and we all know that. So yeah. maybe we create the niche, and it's an incubator, and so we hold space for the farmers and go forward. That's what I say. My only worry with that is. That that's the vision that Ivy Wild has as well. Right. So are we duplicating efforts to have a food hub? I mean, why would we collaborate? And I think this was, and maybe this is more about production or about uh, getting other food to other people than it is about uh, having the public be a farmer's market. And I, I, sh I mean, we should collaborate. Totally. Well, I, mean, I, mean, I mean, I just yeah. I mean I don't know if anyone's heard of MM Local, but. They're basically a buyer for. They're basically a buyer of of product, and then they can the goods. So it's like a CSA share, but it's for canned goods. You know, to have, and I know they're they're expanding like crazy. So something like that, where it's 
extending the farmer season mm -hmm. right. would be uh, that would be great. Thank you. And that's what I was trying to figure out was, yeah. was how do we fit into this because there's a political uh, farmer culture here that's that's contentious at best. <laughs> you know, the green restaurants are being used to. They're, they're not going anywhere with the farmers because the farmers themselves are just, there's so much infighting. So what they do is they just say, well, here, if you're interested, just come see me later. But they don't get involved with any farmers' organizations because it's just- Well, and then the other thing is so a tough. farmer cannot make a living selling at farmers' markets. Right. It's more of a marketing piece for them. And what a market like this would do is kick up the production that could be sold to the, to the public and they can stay home. Yeah. And the ABOG truck can come by and load it up and Goodbye. I'm headed to a soccer game instead of the farmers market. That, that that's kind of my thought. That's, mm -hmm. and, and that's their student name. Is that something about the price? Yeah. yeah. I mean, de fix? definitely. I mean, if it, yeah, if we can create a system around that, or even a big buying club. You know, individuals. You know, having buying from all the farmers, and this is a pickup site for people. Like a CSA. Yeah, but more like a large bulk. So yeah. you go in with your neighborhood and we're picking up, you know, 150 pounds of apples. So can you go into the wholesale side versus just the retail and be tapping into the restaurant market of restaurants going to buy local beyond just meat, produce, that cheese, and so forth? That would really, absolutely. Because that, that would be that more sustainable than yeah. depending on that retail market, I would think. And so, Megan, let's pick up our 150 pounds of apples mm -hmm. and let's can them right here now before we leave. We're going to drink some wine. We're going to eat it at the deli while the apples are cooking. And then we're going to finish it all up, box it up, and we're out of here. Yeah. In that order? I want to look at the world. <laughs> okay. So who's the business that runs that? Who's the business that runs what? The canning operation. Like Running the canning operation. Yeah, I mean, there's a there's yeah. an opportunity so for there's an opportunity for them to have a happy you know, Exactly. Here. And they charge a fee and we're happy yeah. to pay it. I mean, yeah. But this is a cool company, which you yeah. just described. Yeah. Yeah. I'm a local. Yeah. That's the name of it. And then Boulder, right? Boulder, yeah. And they just opened a new facility and I mean they're looking to expand. I have multiple people that are interested in bringing them down here. Yeah. They're in Denver? Boulder. Okay. Or bad. Arvada, that's oh. right. Oh, okay. That's right. Their yeah. PO box is older, but their facility is older. <laughs> okay. I just want to throw something in as a speaker on the tourist thing. Because when I was talking to Brandy Williams about this idea about three weeks ago, the moment I mentioned tourist attraction, her eyes lit up. I mean, ooh, the city would love to do that. So if, if for instance, instead of having local this Springs or Pikes Peak or something, if we had a brand for all these local products that our residents are growing and making. We had a commercial kitchen facility and it was a tourist kind of a brand. It was a local brand, like you know, Rocky Mountain Chocolate. Then I wonder if the city might say, wow, we, we might want to somehow get involved in that because we want to boost tourism. Mm -hmm. well, actually, there's 300 million, over $300 million in bonds for downtown development waiting. And grants. Well, that's enough money. So, you know, the city's interested in this if we're willing to organize like we did today and continue on. And don't let the conversation I have a question. Down. Is anybody from the, the city's group that's supposed to be involved in this area of town here today? It's a holiday. It's a city holiday. Yeah, all that's <laughs> no, nobody's saying that. No, I would have been off the Where are they? I mean, they would have been there. <laughs> <laughs> Our zoning friends. Got oh my God! All right. So, are there any precedents for markets of you know, cities in five hundred thousand dollar population ranges that are by five hundred million? Five hundred thousand people. Five hundred thousand. What I'm talking about is scale for us. Right. And and because as we as we did as we we're looking at uh, building mesas, we're looking at a few things. Part of it is we deal with all these big wonderful images, but I think there's a certain wonder about this size that we have. How, and that's where the incremental thing is. What's the population in Napa, California? No, no. It's not near this one. No. no. We've got we, the Oxbow no. market. Right. right. But and that's why I thought we need precedence yeah. of that kind yeah. of scale and size. Because to start out, it really has to be for us. I think that's right. where, because yeah. tourists will come where we are. Right. And I think that's yeah. going to be yeah. one of the yeah. wonderful things. Yeah. Yeah. When we put that neon yeah. sign yeah. up, go out and see Cleveland's so, five. Yeah. But, but they've got a couple but million. Maybe that's bigger. Than but they've got a couple million draw. Yeah. Same thing with Cleveland. People drive from Chicago to Milwaukee Public Well, we, well, 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 we have three and a half million in the north. But they do. I mean, they, they, it is that kind of a destination. 
But it just feels like that kind of appropriateness for scale and price and incremental start. And it's those things like, how do we, how do we actually even help the farmers markets we have in the city? And that's what I thought was an interesting conversation as we were going, going through it. How are we supporting the farmers and the farmers markets that are already here? And in some ways, I, I, that's something we haven't thought about. I guess that was kind of an interesting moment of, of how do you actually start even people with extra produce, people with all this other stuff. And some of what's led the, excuse me, Vicki, some of what's led the farmers markets to be where they're at right now is developers saying, we want to look good. Would you come and make us look good on Saturday? And so that's what they do. And, and honestly, it's not fair because they're not making any money. And, and so, I mean, can you imagine a farmer's market at the North Nevada thing? It's awful. It doesn't it's work. it's not even our local farmers. It's Miller Farms out of Florida. Yeah, they're, they're not even ridiculous. our farmers. So, yeah. I have a, on the location, because I think there is, it doesn't need to be a plan B or C or whatever. But one of the things I think about, too, is that it's so quick off the highway from two different places. And if you're going to have big trucks coming in, if you go way into town, people are not going to like that big trucks coming in and out on these streets. And this is like, where are you going to go if you're, and I know you're saying local, but if you're a tourist, you don't want to have to drive all downtown in order to find where it is. You want to go, it's right here, just take this turn, and it's right there, and you'll see it. So I think the location has really got some good benefits to it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I want to be able to ride my bike from Gold Hill Mesa downtown to get some yeah, get local yeah. produce. Thank you. So, okay, I'd like to suggest this. Um, I would like to hear Mike, Mark, Bobby, and John, for starters, give me what you think the next thing we need to do is. Mike. What's our What's our vehicle for ownership and operations? Cooperative. Combination, cooperative, uh, private, model, public. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, <clears throat> but, I, but I also would like to say, quickly, we have a model in this city that works really well. It, it's got a great, it's got a great example of what's possible in this city, and that's care and share. I would love to take care and share and put it right there. That is the building. That that's the whole. It's beautiful, and we did that as a community here, didn't we? And we did it to address the needs of the people in the Southern Colorado region. It's charitable work. And we, we came to that, we, 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 we made it happen, we invested in it, and it, it's awesome. Now we need to do it again, except this time, let's address the change that needs to occur so that Care and Share does less business. And I'm saying rebuild our food system from the farm to the consumer's plate. That's, that's, we can do this. And, and, and look at care and shares, ownership, management, and so forth. I think that gives us some, some guidance. Mm -hmm. Well, because I, I, I see two paths. One is that we have a location slash design. The other one we have is business plan and pro forma. And, and those two obviously combine at some point, but I think those, those could be the two starting committees or, or workforce pieces that could come out of this. That we, uh, and, and frankly, I'm putting to Bobby because the location design thing is kind of a start over here and then somebody take on the, the business plan, business development piece of this so that we can actually, because of the, those are the two things that if we go to a Chris or if we go to uh, somebody at Griffith's Blessings, uh, we at least have some plan about how we want to do it. How much we want to start leasing the land for? Uh, should we lease? Should we buy it? Should we? Um, and how much would that be? Or, or say, listen, we're, we'd like you to donate this land for one year for us before and rent free, and then and then this is how we'll pay for that in the next five years. Yeah, so those awesome. those are the things that, but that won't be there unless we kind of come up with who's this going to be, and then who's going to be in this pent up need of how many businesses need some help, or that are already here that could use a place. And Mike, you've got a big following around you. You have a, uh, because of just, you, of like minds, you already have a, a, a wonderful piece. And we start adding to that, I think could be a very impressive thing. Uh, where's that next tortilla restaurant going to be? It sounds like if you're trying to just figure out what the different task group subcommittees are, that it's the yeah. physical, and it's the physical, <laughs> yeah. physical, physical. Uh, but then it's the 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 uh, the user side, right? It's 
it's it's the local food people, uh, both providers and, and consumers. Which, which I see as both the fiscal and I see that as, as who, who are we marketing to? Because that has to be the business plan. Why? Uh, yeah, who, where, when, why? Okay, Bobby, uh, what would you add to, to what would be like the next step? First, I want Vicki to get the 20 million. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Right. I'll give you the good, good well, plan. I think <laughs> when you've got a site that technically works, I'm not saying it's the end all site, but what ends up happening is, just of what we said here, the building could be cavernous or it could be too small until you know, you know, really what could go in it. When you start talking and it might, you know, all of a sudden, you know, is it big enough? You know, is, or is it, or is it too big? I, my concern is if you, if you go out and just get a little building and see you have four little vendors in it, and then you, it, it's kind of, you, you won't, you need the site and you need to say this is where we are, this is where we're always going to be, and you build your synergy from that point. Whether it's, you, you paint the building, you make it look nice, and it's got one little end to it. And I think at the end of the day, you do go to Chris, and I think Chris is somebody that, that land's sitting there empty, it's been sitting there empty, it's um, long-term use. You know, I, any developer would look at this and say, I own all the outside parcels. This is a slam dunk for me. I not only get the synergy of downtown to this point, but I own all the land around it. So I'm controlling now three times the land cost for housing or this or that. And he, you know, he'd love this thing to start off however it starts off, and whether that's a, you know, a year free or I'm doing this or lower rents or... You know, I, we have an advocate there that you don't have to go back and start that process over trying to find another location, even though you need to, if this is something that really needs to happen, then you do need to have a location in mind, whether it's this one or a fallback, so that you have a negotiating aspect to say, look, Chris, it's great, but we've got a site here that can sustain us, that's willing to do this, and like anything else, have have something there, but yeah. and, and Bobby, I think what you've got is is then how do we start incrementally on to get to this vision? Yeah. Is going to be the next one. I think that's what John and I were trying to figure out too. Is this idea that that this where where does that that drapery fall that says this is the part of the first space that we start with because we have ten people, they need X number of trucks, they need this kind of access, we need this kind of parking. That's what I was after. Is is where do, we, where do we start to incrementally even start in these buildings? So that when we're ready, when we're growing, because all of a sudden you've got a summer, and then like Bill was saying, you've got access to the outside. Suddenly we've got a place where we may not we may not need all of this building to start with, but we have that first five truck bays that we need. Yeah, and whether that building even stays or not. Again, exactly. it, but it, it's it, not it's, that it's an architecturally uh, aesthetic that. building. Yeah. It's just that when we looked at how to use what was there to the cheapest and easiest way to get what Mike was trying to do, that building works fine. Um, but that building also could be something else down the road um, as this thing, you know, builds and builds. From a, from a, you would start here and go this way because it's, it's already got plumbing, it's already electrical, it's already got HVAC, it's got your, your cost components to keep it at a minimal cost. You would start and work towards what is, you know, the back warehouse. It's even got a roof. It's got roof. Yeah, I mean, it's got the height. It's got a mezzanine. I mean, you know, you can, you can punch windows. You can not punch windows. You know, it's like you said. The uh, it's just what you want to put into the cost of that, as well as I mean, ultimately, that's still Norwood owns that property, and you know, what we could get Chris to, mm -hmm. to to step up, which would be. Chris is here's what this task force is, is proposing. And he was here to help. No, he's very, yeah. that's very good. I think he won as as a community person and as a developer. Is this just Mike? You know, running around saying we need this, we need this, or if he sees there's twenty people here and there could have been forty people here and the next thing there's you know, this thing gets the momentum that he can look at it and say, great use of a piece of property that's going to sit for the next 10 years, 
you know, mm -hmm. until somebody comes up with something and could be the catalyst for, like you said, a, a lot of, of development. John, what will be our next step? Next step, if you pick one. I think, uh, in my mind, the, the first step would be to figure out the other half of the portfolio. Uh, figure out what Milwaukee and others are charging their vendors. Um, to figure out how this thing can wash and, and get worked out. Um, and I think it's, uh, it, it's maybe going out on a little bike ride and seeing what other spaces might be a good uh, <coughs> alternative kind of things. And um, whether it's incrementally done. Um, we actually had talked about a little spot right next to there, which is the Doors building, also owned by Chris, that if you start there, and maybe you build enough energy that then this can get built. So yeah, that, that, was, that was one of the places that, that is an opportunity to maybe start smaller and not have to feel um, dwarfed. I mean, this, this room right now feels really uh, full because all you guys are in it, but when it's just me hanging out, it's, uh, it's quiet, um, which is kind of nice. But uh, um, I think, um, yeah, I think the other half of that performance is probably key. So is, is there another next step that hasn't been mentioned besides determining the business or, or governance model, looking at locations, fleshing out the pro forma, and maybe looking at grants? Is there another next step? I think Becky brought it up already, and that really is having a more concentrated, directed effort to other existing businesses okay. and vendors and tenants. people in this community that would really be tenants. Okay. And developing that list and really doing that, you know, contact with those folks, telling them about these ideas, getting their feedback, you know, seeing what their need is to grow their own businesses um, or start in a new space. And, you know, because I think about the commissary kitchen idea, and of course, our Gotta Love It kitchen folks, they just expanded and built a new place just right there on Uenta. So how quickly are they going to want to see a new space be built? Um, you know, but the other reality to that is, is what could be the potential growth for us to really be serious about a commissary kitchen for a lot more people to do value-added processing, and I think there's definitely a reality there that it could happen. But it's I think we need to be reaching out to other folks. You don't want to have to build that. As a footnote, when Jerry and Debbie opened God I Love It on September 1st on Uenta, by the end of the month they had 17 uh, local people wanting to co-pack there. Mm -hmm. So in one month, 17 people were producing whatever, salsa pickles, mm -hmm. salad dressing, whatever, signed up with them. And Ivy Wild's going to do the same thing. Mm -hmm. So they're, you know, the more capacity we have for commercial kitchen, the more we get people thinking about, well, maybe I want to make something. So we find that piece between it. So I got to go. Um, <laughs> I got to go. Okay. Uh, now, uh, but part of that is uh, Bobby and, and uh, Mike have been kind of doing all the heavy lifting so and so far, except when you know, stepped into to start saying, all right, how do we start to bring everybody in? Do you guys still stay as the, I'm, I'm trying to find a, a person to, to run the, the two communities that would be, or the, the two workforces that really be location in this business plan? Because is there some organization that takes over the takes over this vision, or would you do it? <laughs> Vicki's done such a great job. <laughs> well, <laughs> wouldn't it be nice to have her in a role of leadership? Here's, here's I, 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 I mean, I, I, that's why I thought it this was This project is years. not mine. It is not mine. Well, that's why I thought and, I, I, I want to make sure. I want, you guys I want to be part of it. You've done wanna, so much already. I want to make sure. I've got, I mean, I've got a lot of skin in it, and it's my yeah. skin. Um, but <laughs> but I'm, I, have, I wouldn't, from a, from a programming standpoint, I wouldn't know who to yeah. ask or to say what you need a thousand feet or you need ten thousand feet. Right. And if you're in there at right. two thousand, how much does that? I mean, I know how to ask questions if I get a person in front of me, but you know, Mike's got more knowledge of, of that side of it. If That's someone really else, idea. if someone yeah. else can take. Well, for, for starters, I wanted to suggest I need a, a, a couple of co-chairs to make sure that the meetings continue, that reports are done, that. I would like I would like to stay on to help with communications, but it would really be helpful if I could find a couple of people. I'm thinking Vicky and Ken, but you know it could be anybody else. <laughs> All right. I love it. He said yeah. I was a pistol. So would yeah, you guys yeah. be willing to at least start? And if there are other co-chairs that want to join them, if 
If there's a little planning team of three to five, that, that, that's fine. But the idea is that we just we keep moving this forward. What's the next step? If we have a couple, three or four little subgroups that we're going to form, would you guys be willing to sort of be the, making sure that those get Those next formed? steps. Oh, okay. Is that something? Is that, that something? Amy would be a good You're talking about the neck. I'm talking about. I know, right? Two, <laughs> I want to know what I'm getting into. Co chairs <laughs> and the task force. Oh, yeah. That's fine. And I, again, if anyone else has the time and the administrative kind of inclination, please join those two. Um, we, you know, we don't need to have just two. We can have three, five, whatever. But then you two would be. We'll, we'll talk about the need to get some subgroups going and making sure that those get convened. Maybe we want to have a big town hall where we form those groups soon. We can talk about the best way to do it. Um, but would you, if you guys are willing to do that, I'd love to sort of hand over some of the leadership to you guys. We'll launch then let you know. Okay. And, and, and what I think we'll do is we'll. Um, We'll try to, to get some some gatherings of these different groups. The uh, the ones I have on my list are people to find new tenants, people to look at locations, people to look at business and governance models, people to look at the performance numbers, people to look at grants. So I see like five kind of things that have been suggested here that should have somebody kind of leading that up. And so uh, I'm going to we'll talk about how to uh, how will Ken and, and Vicky enlist those people to take these tasks, and all of you will be asked to help out. You can do as much as you can. Does that sound like a good uh, outcome here? Is everybody on the email list? If you are, I have some people that I know let us don't know. have. Uh, and if you could put what you, if you could send everybody an email that says, this is the group I'd like to be involved with, it would be very helpful too. Mm -hmm. Who else? Um, Julian, I don't have yours. I have yours. I think I've got everybody's but Jennifer and And I'm happy to provide everything we've done up to this point. And I've, I've got, in fact, you got I get an updated of, list. Did you get sure a put up a website? Is that, yeah. It's up. Okay. Aaron. Because we, we also yeah, that's a, got it all. Right. Well, I think so that's a great place to kind of share, yes, you know, what are the tasks, you know, maybe take that list, put it up there, allow the people to, you know, comment on it. And then so have you guys, you know, consolidate that, yeah. make sense of it. This information that has been discussed today, keep it in a central repository online and then allow people to come in and, you know, maybe disseminate from that. Um, so maybe I'll give you some Instead keys of that to that. Facebook page. Yeah, oh, I totally agree. Yeah. yeah. Just for all the, I know, I've just been watching the emails on this. Yeah, it's, right now it's CS Public Market, but it can be anything. We just needed a placeholder to put something out there online. I mean, if we could actually get the larger, I mean, if we could get the city involved. We have a little spreadsheet on, on, on three to five, I think, these different markets. We have a little spreadsheet that we started that shows the governance and whether it's public or private and whether it's city. Do we have contacts for them? Do we have a contact that you can call on the phone? Okay. One last pitch. By the way, Ken and Vicki are members of the Green Cities Coalition. Four of the Green City Steering Committee members are here. Megan, Becky, myself, and Mark Tremble. So please join and support the coalition if you haven't already. And uh, thank you for your help. You're welcome. Good job.